getting, we're going to start doing our reminders after Salat and Lord, inshallah. Um, just pretty soon we'll be, we'll be praying on 10-10, 10-20. It's going to be kind of late, inshallah. So to, after tonight, inshallah, we'll be doing our reminders after Salat and Lord. Uh, on the nights where we don't have any um, pre-scheduled programs. Uh, but this evening, inshallah, I wanted to see um, who, be, who's, who pays attention and who doesn't. In the khutbah this past Friday, we talked about the divine decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we said that there are four and in order to properly believe in the divine decree of the of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there are four areas that we must master and we have certainty of. Does anybody remember what those areas are? Anybody tell me? Because everybody came to the second book. Uh, no one? Ibrahim, I know you were here. Knowledge. And then, Right, the knowledge that of the, to have certainty that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala knows everything, everything that was, everything that is, everything that will be, and everything that wasn't. Yes, you do. Joanne, yes. That's the only one you know. Okay, very good. All right, Alhamdulillah. But you know that right there. That okay. Let's let's work with that for right now. <coughs> Having that. Under with certainty that Allah knows everything. Um, that by itself, this, if we had that sufficient, inshallah ta'ala, to help us. Remember we said that the thamara, the fruit of belief in the divine decree, or one of, one of the fruits of this is our ability to put our trust in Allah. When we properly believe in Allah's decree, then we properly are able to put our faith and dependency and trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And remember this morning, who was here this morning for Fajr? Anybody remember what we talked about this morning for Fajr? Anybody remember? We talked about Zakaria. What about Zakaria? He asked Allah for a child. What happened? Did Allah give him the child? He delayed it. It was delayed till later on in his life to the point where when, it, when he finally was given the news, he said, how am I going to have a child? I'm, I'm old, my wife is barren, how am I going to have a child? And so, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he, he gives us these stories in the Quran, not for us just to have good bedtime stories to tell our children, but so that we can learn lessons from them. Another one of the stories that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us about is the story of Yusuf alayhi salam. Now that's, that story, which takes up the length of a surah, is filled with lessons. It's filled with lessons of endurance, lessons of patience, lessons of trust. Now let's just take a look at Yaqub alayhi salam. Yaqub, what happened to him at first? His, his little son, Yusuf. Right? So he loved him a lot. Not that he played favorites, but he loved him so much that his other sons thought that he was the favorite. They threw him into the well. What was Yaqub's response when they said, Baba, Baba, Ebony, uh, Ebony, uh, you know, your son was eaten by a wolf. His response was, Nah, y'all did something. But what did, did he say? Come here, let me, let me beat you guys up. You know, let me, I'm going to rough you up. What, what was his response to that? Asabrum huh. Jameen. Allah's going to bring him back to me. That's what he said. Allah's going to bring him back to me. I don't know how. I don't know when. I don't have no. Allah's going to bring him back to me. Asabrum Jameen. How long did it take for Yusuf to be reunited with his father? Uh, a long time. He spent oh, well over a decade in jail. Yusuf alayhi salam spent over a decade in jail. He spent time in the well. Allah never clarified how long Yusuf was in the well. And he was taken to the house.
house of the Aziz. He was raised in the house of the Aziz. Then he spent time in jail. Then he was the Aziz. Then his brothers showed up. And then they had to travel back and forth. At that time, they weren't taking, you know, uh, 747 jets. But all of that had to happen. Yusuf salam, had to get thrown into the well. Because that's what ended up having him raised in the house of, the, of Aziz. And he had to get raised in the house of Aziz. Because that's what ended up leading him to having that interaction with the wife of the Aziz. Because that's what ended up having him thrown in jail. That's what ended up having him meet those guys that he met in the jail and gave them down. Which one of them actually got out and became the servant of the king. And when the king had the dream, he was right there saying, oh, I know someone that can interpret dreams. That's how Yusuf السلام, met the king. That's how Yusuf became the Aziz. That's how Yusuf brought his family. So in order for them to receive that the, the status that they received, all of those things had to line up. And throughout that entire process, Yaqub his statement was, I might have beautiful patience. Because I know Allah is going to bring them. Even when his family thought he was crazy. Because when his brothers first came back, he said, I smell the smell of Yusuf. I smell Yusuf. I mean, he never forgot about Yusuf. He never even forgot about his smell. He never gave up on the promise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He said, I smell Yusuf. They said, ah, what they call it, right? This is your, your, your stray, your crazy thinking. But Yaqub had faith. And he held on to that. And he was reunited with his family. He was reunited with his family. In a way that he knew that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it took a while, but Yaqub never lost hope. And all of these things had to line up the way they lined up in order for things to happen the way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted to happen. And so the moral of all of this is my message for the last few days I've been saying the same thing, coming back to the same point. Because I know that we're struggling. We're struggling with a lot of things. We're struggling internationally. What's happening all over the world for the sleeve. It's, it's like you know, every time we, we think we're taking a step forward, some more news comes to us and say, Yeah, Allah. We're struggling locally. Every time we feel like we're getting a step forward, something else happens and say, Yeah, Allah. But this is this we have we have we have settled for this. We have people who came before us who went through worse than this, who experienced worse than what we're experiencing. They were patient. They held on. They never lost, lost sight of, of the prize. So that's my message to myself. As I go through things, and I know you're going through things, we have to hold on. Hold on to our faith. Hold on to what we know to be the truth. And our brothers and sisters in the and I think I've mentioned this before, uh, one of the things that we can learn from them is one of the, with all of the death and the destruction of Allah, the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect them and, and bring them victory. But all of that which we see, every time I see, I can't speak for everyone, but every time I see of them, I always see them raising their hands and calling out Allah, calling out to Allah. With all of what they're experiencing, they're still filling their hearts with hope. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I think that is one of the greatest lessons that we can learn from them. And in the middle of all the rubble and the destruction, all of the death that they're experiencing, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help them. They're still praying so I to turn away on top of the rubble, broken down messages. They're still coming out for fetching. They're praying so to the fetching in the destruction. And we, we live over here in Society Hill and, and Somerset and these nice houses that we live in with finished basements and, and, and marble roofs tops and, and we're not really praying budget in the mission the way we should be. I'm not saying we don't. Inshallah, we have the brothers in the front row. We have the brothers in the back, inshallah. You guys are going to make me have to come to 
your houses tomorrow morning or like you never miss it. <laughs> They'll be surprised. Be like, who's that in my front door? It's the man. Right? We have to do better at one. You know, hold on to our religion. This is where our success is going to come from. See, why does the Imam keep talking about Qadr? Why does the Imam keep talking about Salat the Masjid? Why does the Imam keep talking about Wudu? Why does the Imam keep talking about attending Jumu on time? Doesn't he know the Muslims are suffering in Sudan? The Muslims are suffering? We got to organize our crowd. I'm not against that. But true victory comes from us holding on to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has taught us about faith. Patience. Reliance and dependency. I apologize, I've, I've gone over a little bit too much time, I've taken up a lot of time this evening, but I really want us, I want us to hold on. And I want us to depend on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through all of our struggles, through all of our trials and tribulations, never lose hope and never despair in the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, none loses or none have despair in the mercy of Allah except those who are astray. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us. That's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide us. I pray that Allah gives us all victory. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us all success.